Hey guys, and welcome to GradeMyDesign.com. I'm Dan Dumas. I'm a graphic designer. Um, I had to put together this uh, neat little chalk effect for my uh, my logo, and I thought, uh, what a great opportunity to connect with you guys again and uh, share with you on how I went about doing it. So uh, let's have a look. Okay, here we go. We're going to start off in uh, Illustrator right now, and uh, just to get our logo. So here it is, a nice vector logo, as you can see. I'm going to copy that and go into Photoshop and have some fun. Um, okay, we're going to paste that in, uh, Command V, and I'm going to paste it in as a smart object. Uh, for, here we go. And for those who don't know what a smart object is, I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate. Uh, let me just blow this up. You can see I'm blowing this up. We have a nice crisp uh, image here. Um, if I would have pasted that in as pixels, uh, here we go, and then decide I want to blow that up. Uh, you get um, you get a just a poor resolution of of, of the image. What the uh, uh, smart object, the vector smart object, does is it retains the the vector data and it gives you crisp results every time. So um, try and get in the habit of using it. Uh, I use uh, smart objects all the time, and it uh, it really is a big time saver in the end. Uh, so, okay, here we go. So now let's start on with the chalk effect. Um, I'm going to take our vector smart object and convert that into a smart object. Uh, let's just change the name here so we don't get confused. Uh, why am I doing that? Well, I want to apply the same the same principle um, as as the vector smart object. Um, I want to be able to. I'm gonna put some raster effects on this but I want to be able to maintain the quality if, if I you know decide I need to change the size of this rotate it so um, I'll, I'll create a, a smart object out of that and uh, so let's go in and edit our smart object so here we go and this is the raster version of our vector object I hope I'm not confusing you here and uh, you can uh, still modify your vector object if, if you decide that you want to change uh, the A to green, you can just double click on it. It's going to open up in Illustrator. You can just uh, make your changes here. Just uh, let me just grab my selection tool and we'll select the A and let's just change that to green. Here we go. And then save that and then go back into Photoshop and you'll notice the change was applied. And when I save this, it's going to uh, apply my, uh, it's going to apply the changes to my working document. Uh, keeping all the effects and everything. So, uh, but we don't want to do that. We're going to keep that red. Um, okay, so to add the chalk effect, we're going to start by creating a black background so we can see what we're doing. Uh, here we go. There we go. Black background. And I want to make a layer mask here. So I'm going to click this icon right here and then go into filter, render, and fibers. So here we go. Um, you can play around with the variants. Uh, this gives it a softer look the less you put, and you know, sharper and more contrasty the the higher you go. Um, same deal with the strength, uh, soft and then sharper and more contrast when you uh, when you up the strength. So we'll put this at about five, and then maybe we'll boost this up to. Uh, 10. Uh, let's go 15. And then you can just play with the randomized, try different things. I like this one right here. So we'll go with that. Okay. So not quite looking like chalk yet, but we're getting there. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, adjust the uh, um, the curves on on this uh, layer mask. And uh, you can do it with levels as well, but I'm, I'm comfortable with working with curves. So you just go under Image, Adjustments, Curves, or Command M. And then I'm just going to blast this right here. And then you can see it's starting to look a little bit more like shock. Yeah, I think we're getting there. Okay, uh, I'm happy with that. Okay, so we're going to accept this. And now um, what we're going to do is uh, these edges are a little bit sharp so unless you're a real pro with the chalk 
um, you're not going to get this. So let's make it a little bit more natural by softening up these edges a little bit. Um, we can do that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, layer and put it in a group. Uh, Command G puts that layer in a group once it's selected. And uh, we're going to select the pixels on this layer by holding down the Command key and clicking the layer. You can see it selects only the pixels. It does not select the, uh, the pixels from the mask. Um, uh, so I'm going to, um, with that selection made and the folder, the group folder selected, I'm going to click the mask button again, the layer mask button. And what it does is it applies, it applies that mask uh, to, um, to, to the, uh, the group. So uh, to, to see the mask and isolate it, hold down the option key and click on it. And then you can see the, our mask right here. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and soften up these edges. I'm going to do the same thing. Hold the command key, click the layer mask, and it's going to select only the pixels. Under the menu, select, um, uh, where are we here? Select, modify, contract. We're going to contract it by five pixels. And depending on your resolution, uh, this number will change. But uh, for what we're working on right now, five pixels will do the trick. So you can see it contracts that selection and it's selecting the inside, this white area. But what we want to do is select the edges, the outside. So I'm going to inverse that, um, in inverse that selection by going Command Shift I. And now we have our edges selected. So um, uh, to, um, to put in an effect on the edges, we're going to go under Filter, uh, Pixelate, and Crystallize. Um, so you can play around with your settings here. Uh, it's remembering my last settings, which is five, and I'm happy with this. But if you boost that up a little bit more, you can see you get some really jagged results. And as you get smaller, it um, starts looking a little bit better. So let's change that to five. It's not too big, not too small, uh, but it's subtle. And then we're going to accept that change. And here you go. You can see we have a nice little kind of jagged edge here. and uh, Let's have a look at our um, our actual effect here, and you can see that it it, it looks a little bit more more natural here. Um, furthermore, just so it's not completely white and completely red solid, uh, let's add a little bit of noise. This also gives it a more natural effect. I'm gonna uh, put this layer on top. Uh, I'm gonna make it white. Um, Oops. The other white. Here we go. And I'm going to go filter, noise, add noise. And uh, I think five is a good number. You want it to be very subtle. It might not be noticeable on your on your TV screens um, or your monitors while, while you're watching this video, but it is it, it's it's a subtle change that makes a difference. So we're going to go OK, and then multiply. And just to make sure that the, uh, this this um, noise effect is only applied to what's underneath it, you hold down the Option key, and you get this little arrow thing, and uh, it it isolates this effect only to what's underneath it. So here we go. So let's see the results on our chalkboard. I'm going to save um, save our smart object, and then close it, and then here we see it on the chalkboard. So I think, uh, I think you're getting the idea here. So just a couple more small minor things to help make it look a little bit more natural. Uh, very subtle things, but they make a world of difference. I'm going to make this slightly opaque just by 10%. Uh, I'm going to bring that down to 90%. There you go. That way the white isn't too, too crazy. And it just kind of looks like it matches more the, the lighting in the room. And just to give everything, I usually do this with, uh, with most of my designs, just to give everything an even uh, balanced look, um, I'm going to select like a, a warm gray. Let's get the warm colors here. Nice warm gray. There we go. I think that's pretty good. Um, fill the top layer with, um, with, with that full color and then go under color. And then we're going to bring that down to about maybe 15%. 
and that kind of evens out the whole design. Anyways, uh, I hope this helps. And because, like, uh, just to go back on why I made this a smart object, if you're doing your design now, I can go in here and I can uh, reduce it, uh, rotate it, and then it it all the uh, uh, vector data is is um, well uh, the resolution of the smart layer is is kept intact, and uh, I can and it, and and we just maintain the quality with every change that we do. You can see, and you could not do that if we did not have a smart object here. So always, always work with uh, smart objects. Um, they're they're a, a, it, it's it's an amazing tool, and uh, it's it's a huge time saver in the end, and it just makes uh, modifying your documents at a later date a, a breeze. So smart objects, always, always, always. I can't I can't say how important that is. So there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this uh, small little tutorial on how to get a uh, chalk effect. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.